Hi, it's Michelle Lee and Alex Rozier. Yes. We have had a very busy morning here in the King 5 newsroom, and we are going to show you, we're going to go back and forth from Sky King, we're going to show you DOT cameras. You've already been out to the park this morning, so we want to give people an update on how that's progressing as well. And you see here in the uh, aerial view right now, it just continues to grow uh, by the minute, and they, they have a march planned. Um, beginning at 11 this morning, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to uh, go three miles from Judkins Park in South Seattle to eventually end up at the Seattle Center. Melissa says that is amazing. If I was not pregnant, I would be there right now. Driving is going to be a problem in downtown Seattle, so be mindful of that. I do want to show you, by the way, um, we do know that there are more transit buses helping people get to that area. Did mm -hmm. you see that when you were out there this morning? I, you know, I, I really didn't, but I was kind of in the middle of that mix, right in, uh, right in the heart of the crowd while we were there. Uh, but there were a variety of uh, different ways of transportation that were bringing people there. And you're going through some of these pictures yeah, here. Yeah, I'm going through some of these. Ryan Takeo was on a bus, um, and I'm not sure exactly which bus he was on. I kind of thought it was Bellevue. He, he came from the east side. Okay. Yeah, I'm not certain what specific town, but the story here is really interesting, actually. he um, He's with a group. They are sending 800 people to this march today, and you're looking at video from the packed uh -oh. bus um, right now. Um, but, but it was a group that started with four women, and that by the end, it's now 800 people wow. who are on their way uh, to the march today. That again begins um, somewhere around the 11 o'clock hour here uh, following a rally that is actually ongoing right now. Sarah says, I have friends who tried to catch that march bus um, or tried to catch the march buses. They are all full. Sarah, where are you and where are your friends trying to catch a bus from? And Melissa wants to know if this will affect traffic on I-5. Here's a live look at um, at least I-90, is that I-90? It's, it's I-90, Rainier okay. Avenue exit. <clears throat> and if you look at the, the far right lane there, that's where you're seeing the Rainier exit. Um, so kind of the center, kind of toward the right hand side of the screen is where the exit you can see is backed up. We have several crews on the ground. Um, I believe we already are starting to see uh, some live pictures uh, from the ground right now. This is all of our mothers and uh, my grandma. And uh, she's kind of the matriarch of our family. And um, that's my bucket list because I'm my right. And so I'm, I'm, I ask them, please let me live until this March, because it was so important to me, for me to model what I feel is right for my family. Can't ask more than that. I made it, and uh, it's a beautiful day, and I praise God, and, and hopefully. The, the nation will will make an impact so we will be heard explaining the pink and then also we have people uh, just recognizing that there are a lot of families and men there so this is not just for women um you're seeing people obviously with the pink as they're called, pussy hats. And a lot of them are actually, it looks like they've been purchased, but a lot of them are handmade. The story is a family of three right here wearing their hats. And uh, you'll see a lot of these hats being worn today. Um, so that's what the hat comment was about. Kanani says, spew love, not hate, love, 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 equality, love, inclusiveness. More Seattle coverage, says Steve. You are taking a live look right now at the Seattle coverage. We have been popping back and forth from Bellingham to Olympia. And you know what? The organizers did not release this route until just a few days ago because they were a little concerned about safety. Um, so this goes from Judkins Park. You can see they're on the move. I can't really tell where, where they are but they were going to eventually get on fourth. And then there are three entry points from there, and ultimately they're gonna end at the Seattle Center. Yeah, it is, it's gonna be quite a, a workout for some folks, more than three miles when it is all said and done, and they are on their way now. And we do have multiple streams going on across all of our platforms. We've got another stream coming in from Washington, D.C. That is also being streamed on Facebook. I wanna just show you this look. Um, this is from Olympia. We just talked to Alyssa Hahn 
moments ago, and she had some really interesting things to say about what's going on in Olympia. Yeah, it was, it was amazing to hear that story of the 87-year-old woman, terminal ovarian cancer out there in a wheelchair today, uh, alongside her grandson who is pushing her and several other members of her family who spoke of why she wanted to just be out there um, for this effort that's taking place that you're looking at right now. Glenn, tell us where you are and what you're seeing. So right now we are across from Seattle City Hall. We are at 4th and James. And uh, when Joseph, uh, you can see all the people here are gathering along. So not only do you have the march. We would love to have you in the city and join us on the walk. First, what we're going to do is have the indigenous people come through. And then that's where we merge in. So basically what you just heard from one of the leaders of the march here is asking all these people you are seeing along the march route to join in as the main body of the march actually goes through. Again, we're right in front of Seattle City Hall. Uh, and you mentioned something about cell phones earlier. We were actually at the beginning of the march there as it was turning on to Jackson. And uh, we're actually using a technology that depends on cell phones. It was shut down. Even our cell cell phones really wouldn't work. And I think that tells you something, not just about technology, but it tells you about how many people are likely to be on their phone, sending pictures, sending texts, making phone calls. And as you come around here, you can actually see the leading edge of the march with a police escort coming at us down 4th Avenue at 4th and James. You have the King County Courthouse to the right, the King County Administration Building to the left. We're actually heading south and taking you back into the beginning of this march. I'm hoping our signal holds here. Uh, and it is uh, difficult to know really just how many people we had. The police were estimating about 30,000 they were expecting. Organizers said they were expecting closer to 50,000. <coughs> Who knows? That's the bottom line here. It is a lot of people. But I think as soon as the election happened, women especially felt like they had to start doing something. But it said I heard a number again reiterated this morning that um, I mean a lot of a lot of women did vote for Donald Trump. Could be, I presume. And a lot of did a lot of women didn't. And a lot of women who did not vote for him feel very strongly about it. I'm glad you're here because, you know, none of the local TV stations have had this march on the air. No, we've been on all, this is right now on Facebook. But I know, but you've not been on regular TV with this march. And, and when I called King TV, they told me you would be on at 5 o'clock this afternoon with the march. I think that's a problem. What, where are you from? Where are you from? Seattle. You're from Seattle. Yeah. Because we have people here from all over the state. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're excited to be here. Thank right. you what for is covering your, What are your, uh, she did not defeat it, 2016, a uh, piece is a woman's issue. What are some of the messages that you're hearing as well out here that you were, you might be surprised at? I'm not, I, I'm not surprised. I know women, especially in this area, feel very strongly about Planned Parenthood continuing to get some funding from the government. I think that's probably one of the big drivers. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we just want to reiterate here, you know, that woman was saying, I would really like to see this on King, and she called King, she says, today. We just have network constraints, so there is a real aspect of why we can't be on television all the time. Unfortunately, you know, we would like to be on, on television, but you know what, This re we really have an opportunity to reach so many people mobily. I do want to take another look. This is at Westlake Center, um, and we're seeing a lot of people gather there right now. We are going to try to switch off from Glenn and hit Danielle Lee. We've been trying to reach her today, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's really incredible on uh, the cell phone strength. So earlier when we were talking to Danielle, she actually had even troubles uh, tweeting mm -hmm. us. Glenn hasn't seen that when he was out in the field, but this is kind of what we're dealing with when we're talking about cell phone signals and trying to reach some of our field crews. 
out and about today. Mm -hmm. So, If you're just joining us throughout the morning, you have seen the quantity of people that are out there. We're talking about a stretch of three miles long filled with people along this route starting at Judkins Park in South Seattle going all the way to the Seattle Center. So if you're familiar with the city at all or if you're not, that's three miles worth of people uh, from sidewalk to sidewalk making their way through the city right now so cell phone uh, service is uh, very difficult but now it does appear that we have Danielle Lee with us Danielle if you can hear me can you tell us where you are and what you're seeing hi Alex yeah we are on Jackson right now right at Rainier and Bourne and we're heading down towards downtown it has just been incredible out here to see the amount of people who are walking and I mean all sorts of people from all different ages I think the youngest person that I talked to so far was several uh, months old she didn't do a lot of talking uh, the oldest was in her mid 80s and was out here walking and it's just great to see the unity and the energy around all of them I mean, you can see all these people it's a little bit like being on I-5 right in the middle of rush hour so we've been pretty slow going and the cell reception has been pretty difficult but that's just a testament to the amount of people who were really moved by the events of the last couple months and wanted to come out and make their voices heard. We haven't talked about this for a while, but the crowds have really been underestimated. At least that's the word on the street, right? So when we were looking at Washington, D.C., they were prepared for 200,000 people. Well, the estimates are that there might be 500,000 people. In Chicago, they had 100,000 people, they thought, so they actually canceled the march and just led a rally. Now, Seattle was anticipated to have anywhere between 30,000 people, and we heard upwards of 100,000 people. So, you know, the numbers, as Glenn has said, it's hard to tell. They could be anywhere and everywhere, but we have just seen miles of people, and not just women, we've seen men, we have seen children and families together, and people bringing some of their, their loved ones who might be in their 80s to this march. Danielle mentioned it. We saw it with Glenn. We saw it with Alyssa as well, who was in Olympia too. So now we're getting another look at Sky King. Sky King is back in service. They had to actually leave for a little bit to go get some fuel, but now we're back in business and seeing uh, this great image of downtown Seattle. Yeah, Sky King, along with so many others, getting a bit of a workout today. Uh, for, but again, I mean, this rally, just one of many happening throughout the state of Washington. There's one in Spokane happening today. I spoke with a group at Judkins Park this morning that came from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, to uh, Seattle for the event today. There's also one in Bellingham, one in Olympia, where you mentioned Alyssa Hahn was. Uh, it's been amazing to hear uh, from the people who are taking part in this but also just to look at these aerial images and the sea of people that have made the trip. A lot of people on our Facebook page, they're saying, let's talk about the issues at hand here. Victoria says, uh, because in Seattle, we know women's rights are human's rights, and we've heard that throughout the week, and then especially today. Now, if you notice, when we were talking about the Women's March in Seattle, they adopted the spelling W-O-M-X-N, and that was important for the organizers here in Seattle because they wanted it to be inclusive to all people of all gender identities, ethnicities, ages, abilities, religions, sexual orientations, just to come to participate in this event. So, you know, they said, we don't care who comes to this march. We just want this march to be respectful and peaceful and a reflection of the civil rights movement. Even that's what the organizers told us uh, when before they started and before they took off today. So they said that the goal is really to provide resources for people to connect with one another and kind of become accomplices and, and work towards equity and social justice in America. And that is really a theme that we've seen. We've seen a lot of people come, you know, out today for different reasons. You know, some people are anti-Trump, some people are in for equity. It just really, we haven't really pinpointed one single focus except for to promote unity and respect for one another. And now you're taking a live look at Portland, Oregon, where their uh, march is underway as well. This is their aerial shot. And you can see that the weather in Seattle is cooperating a lot more than it is right now in Portland. As you can see, their uh, umbrellas are out as they make their way through the city marching as well. It's been a pleasure to cover this yeah. with you, Alex, and also just all of our Facebook 
uh, viewers who are joining in with us and people who have been marching and sharing what they have been seeing on Facebook and then rejoining this live stream with us. So we certainly do appreciate this, but we've been in bright and early this morning, mm -hmm. so we're going to change guards and Take stay with this. Yeah. <laughs> so Heather Bosch is going to come back. We're going to look at Sky King when we do the switch. and. Um, Thank you to Thank everyone you. who joined this conversation, and, and respectfully on both sides. I, I know it's, a, it's an interesting time in American politics, and so we certainly appreciate you joining in.